Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the April 25th meeting of the Lorain County Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Kahlo has our dog from the kennel today. He's scared. Our featured dog this week is about a six-month-old black lab. Uh, he's a little skittish, but he's young yet. He's just looking around interested. Uh, he was found in uh, Avon Lake and Electric Boulevard, so maybe Councilwoman Fender Bush would like to take him back where he came from. She's <laughs> joining us today. Uh, He'll be available for adoption at 3 o'clock on this Saturday. And we only have 18 dogs. We've got a great month, but we'd love to empty the place out, so stop by and see us. Awesome. Doing a great job over there at the dog kennel, getting those dogs adopted. We'll have our final special purpose flood damage reduction resolution hearing. 1120, we'll have our land reutilization corporation presentation. Under resolutions number one, there are no job and family services bills, investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Advances repayments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Travel? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under the commissioners, authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within the jurisdiction of Lorraine County Commissioners. Mr. Cortez? Actually, I do have a number of issues, uh, especially since last week we didn't have a session since the, the president was uh, in Lorraine County for a visit. Uh, so I have some uh, personnel actions uh, with regard to solid waste, job and family services. Um, Golden Acres and possibly uh, no, that may be it. So uh, those are some potential new hires. Um, one is a uh, discipline. And those topics are allowable under the Sunshine Law to be discussed in executive session. So I'd ask the conclusion of our regular board meeting today. We go into executive session uh, to talk about those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Approve way of the reading of the Salmon County Commissioner's meeting minutes of April 11th and 18th, 2012. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Approve the course of renewal effective May 1st, 2012 through April 30th, 2015, the amount of $867,716. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Under the engineer, war contract precision paving Milan in the amount of $181,375.10. For Baumhart Road resurfacing project. Ten birds were opened on April 17th, this being the most responsive, complying with specifications. Work is to be completed by November 16th and will utilize American Roadway Logistics Inc., National Land and Power Inc., and Wealthy Inc. as subcontractors for the project and no substitutions. The estimate was $201,812.70 
to be paid 80% federal and 20% of PWC. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Authorized engineer to execute contract being prepared by ODOT with Bromhelm Engineering and Surveying Company, Avon, to provide construction management services on station road resurfacing project, Columbia Township, in the amount of $229,404. 13 statement of qualifications were received and will be paid 80% federal and 20% OPWC. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under probate, <coughs> adopt probate court credit card policy and authorize Judge Walther and Court Administrator Darlene Chapman to utilize the county's lower met issued Visa credit card not to exceed $7,500 to the year 2012. Said usages for work related expense, food, transportation, gas and oil, motor vehicle repair and maintenance, conference, telephone and lodging. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under the Sheriff, authorized Lorain County Sheriff to apply for grant monies through fiscal year 12, Bryan Memorial Justice Assistant Grant to purchase 2012 Chevy Caprice Police Package Vehicle. This request is based upon a mutual agreement with the cities of Elyria and Lorain, Ohio Attorney General certified a spare allegation claim and neither the city nor the county would receive any monies until agreement was approved. Therefore, the allocation of funds will be split as follows. Elyria and Lorraine will receive $19,408.67 and Lorraine County will receive $19,408.66. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Cortez, County Administrator? I have no additional reports this morning. Thank you. Mr. Innes, Assistant County Prosecutor. Commissioners, I have two matters of imminent litigation, court action that I would like to discuss with the commissioners in executive session. Commissioners report. Uh, well, I'd like to say that we had a really nice Lorain County Township banquet uh, this past Thursday evening, uh, New Russia Township. It was well attended. Um, also want to say to uh, those at or, uh, Lorain County Community College, what a great job that they did um, getting the president there safely. And, and um, you would think that they did this like every day. They were, it was like clockwork. So I just want to commend them for a, a job well done. And it was really nice to have the president here in Lorain County. And that's the end of my report. And while you're doing that, thank the city of Elyria with their police department and all the mutual aid mm -hmm. to get it done also. Yes, Richard. everybody together Mayor did Brenda a great was all job. over the top of that. Yep. Uh, busy week. Uh, we received a letter from the EPA, Ohio EPA, and they have instructed us to go ahead with our solid waste management district plan. It's been ratified and not any changes of really any sort whatsoever. So we got the plan all done. Kudos out to Brian Parsons from Avon, who's the chair of the Solid Waste uh, Committee, Advisory Committee, did a great job getting this all together, so we're moving forward on that. <coughs> uh, I was in Columbus on Friday for, I had two sets of meetings down there with the Commissioner's Association. While we were down there, we were the envy of every other county in the state because we had not only the president here, but we also had the Republican nominee. Wondering how it all ended up in Lorraine County, so. Uh, a lot of discussion. Uh, in regards to our meetings, uh, we had a lot of discussion in regards to what's going forward with workforce development. That's one of the major issues facing counties and the state of Ohio is getting qualified workers for the companies who need them. There's been a lot of issues with employers that they have jobs out there. Uh, we just don't have people to fill them. So after our normal board meeting, we met with uh, people from the state and actually our committee asking for changes to Senate Bill 316 in regards to how counties will work in regards to the lo local workforce dollars because there's a new workforce transformation that the governor is created to streamline from 77 entities down to 13. So we gave a lot of suggestions how we'd like to see things changed and that's through the education committee right now. And uh, the vice chair is actually Senator Gail Manning, so we've been in uh, communication with her and uh, Senator Lehner, who's the chair of that committee. Uh, also, like to congratulate Leo Citra. I was at the Learning Veteran of the Year dinner. Leo's been a great guy in the community throughout the years. Congratulations to him. Uh, we also had the uh, Hispanic Gala. They did a great job putting together, as always, with their conference. Uh, the Investment Advisory Committee met yesterday. Uh, we're moving forward with the county treasurer and the IAC 
to give the treasurer the ability to uh, do long-term bonding on local projects. Our first one's going to be a highway project through our motor vehicle and gas tax. I'd like to thank the treasurer and Dennis Jacobucci from our uh, investment consultants for helping us get through that. That's in light of House Bill 225 finally going into effect last month. So if there's any communities out there within our county who have dedicated revenue streams of projects, we have the ability to do financing at market rate for you. So please look at us also. Uh, and last night I attended the Addis Dinner, Alcohol, Drug, Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services Dinner, Elaine Jorgis' event, who at the same time her husband was going through the cash mob at the garden basket was packed on my way trying to get to the college. Uh, and I got a chance to sit and have dinner with the director from the state of Ohio, Ormond Hall. Uh, we had a lot of little lengthy conversation about public services and state cuts. Uh, we found some common ground to discuss. So, busy week and working on land bank forever and ever. So, mm -hmm. that'll be our next conversation. Uh, it was a busy week. Um, yeah, where do I want to start? Uh, the Township Association, I was there uh, with uh, Ms. Kikowski. And the association came up about the building department. And um, what they would like to do is actually disband the building department. I believe there's only one township in it. That's Columbia Township right now. And um, I would believe you guys were looking at withdrawing. Is that correct, uh, trustees? Yes. We were looking at it. OK. But the association would actually like to disband the building department so they can create their own building department. So I would like to know, bring that up for uh, support on here on uh, disbanding it. Uh, Mr. The Cortez, request. there's only one township involved in the building department right now? My understanding from Columbia Township, vis-a-vis -vis correspondence received from them, if we can provide service uh, during the working day that they would continue to utilize the building department. Um, so um, that's, we received that correspondence and we are still providing those services in Columbia Township because we're able to do that. And we have two of the trustees here. Do you have comments? I didn't, I couldn't make the meeting. I got jammed up and I knew it was going to end early. I have sort of finished about 815. Dick, Mike, are you guys withdrawing, not withdrawing? Yeah. You need to come uh, up. Yeah. yeah. Huh? You have if to you come can come up, up Dick. Okay. We have not I wasn't there, so I don't know the I conversation. Was there, yeah, I was out of town. Okay. We have not made a formal vote on it, so I'm not going to say yay or nay. But okay. as of right now, meeting with the building department, people, I personally would like to stay in. I cannot speak for the other two trustees. Okay. Okay. That's so we will wait to hear. If, we until do you make something a officially. That's that's all I can say. I can tell you, we've not voted on it. Okay. Is it coming up on your agenda? It comes up every two weeks. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> the Township Association, they sent out a um, request to all 18 townships. And the ones that did respond stated they wanted to um, eliminate the county building department. So I understand that. I okay. did not see that. All right. So our service well, they, been down Yeah, for if you could days. just let us know and then we can take action. We'll do it officially, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think it would just die a slow death once you guys pull out. Yeah, there would be no need, so it would just close itself. So, Right, they actually needed the, the county to do a resolution, though, in order to Correct. close it so they can build, have their own building department. Uh, it was a topic, and I told them I would bring that up. Sure. I, I wasn't there. Um, like I said, I couldn't make it. I don't know if Commissioner Kosky, anything, discussions you had with them also? Was I it? have had no discussions with them. Oh, okay. I didn't know if maybe you brought it up under elected he brought, officials' comments. No, he brought it up the uh, land bank. Oh, under okay. Commissioner's comments. Yeah. Uh, the next item coming up is St. Joe's. Um, <clears throat> I spoke with uh, Mayor uh, Rittenar from the City of Lorraine. Uh, we're actually going to have a uh, meeting on Friday, I believe. Is that correct, Mayor? Early morning to uh, talk about it. Um, I did meet with ORA. Uh, a little disappointed with that. I asked for information to be sent to me. I got a packet the day of the meeting. Uh, with not everything in it. Um, looking at it, and uh, I'll let you know, because what I told the mayor, uh, what I could support, um, and I think it would clean up the proposal. Instead of asking the city to uh, forgive a loan, if we pay them back something, and then turn around and ask for a loan for the new facade, 
I think it would be cleaner if we just asked them to forgive the 1.375 million, have the city of Lorraine uh, pay for the operational costs of $600,000, and then have the county give the loan to South Shore for $250,000 for the new facade, and then have um, a guarantee from the city of Lorraine on this project. Looking at it and um, talking with some people that are in, involved in property management, the 10 to $15 for um, St. Um, Joe's Community Center, it's probably a little unrealistic at this time. But um, I'm going to bring some people in to the uh, meeting on Friday with the mayor, and then I'll report back here next week on our discussion. So uh, that's uh, St. Joe's. Um, and then another issue that came up, um, we had an issue with our procedure. Um, we went in oh, about a, over a month ago into an executive session. And then discussion came up in there um, on support for a for an organization for marketing, basically saying that we would put an ad in their book. And um, support was given to it, and um, it went through. It didn't come through a resolution, which normally is our procedure for the any department reporting to the commissioners. Well, that was during the admin when we were talking about the different issues Jim had, and there was a Hispanic thing. Is that what you were, when you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, it, that's, that's kind of confusing as an admin, as an executive, because we kind of bounce around in there. Um, but that came up. So that's a, okay, I, I look at it as a procedural error, mm -hmm. and it's easily fixed. So, and then um, last week I sent out, I got an email from Mr. Cordes asking about an admin session. And I replied back that I would like to actually have our admin sessions right here in front of the public. Uh, reporters can be here and we can do our business here since it is public business instead of doing it during the executive session in the back hall, you know, with the um, security code um, on there in order to enter the room. So what I'm proposing is to kind of clean it up and make it where we don't get any trouble and we don't get any lawsuits like we've seen here in Lorraine County, is to have our admin session follow our board meeting and then go into the executive session. So if people who are here for the meeting, if they want to stay and hear public business and hear what's going on, because that's really where the meat and potatoes is of our meetings, they could stay here, listen to it, and then, um, then we would go into our executive session. I have a problem for that. If it does. Administrator says we need an admin session. Okay. So if we could start doing that, uh, Mr. Cordes, if we can have our admin sessions follow these meetings prior to going into executive session. And the board is at any time free to discuss anything they want out here uh, and ask me anything they want. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, well, our normal uh, public discourse. Right. Also. Well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm just saying we, we got into a topic where we spent public funds in an admin session and didn't come through. That's my concern. It was a minor amount. It was $500, but, again, it should be something that we talk about in front of the public. It's just being transparent, and I think it, uh, it gets the community more involved in the projects that we're working on if they start to hear the real items instead of coming in here and hearing yay or nay on each item. Because uh, really, the way we conduct our meetings today, we could be done in about 10 minutes. And then the public doesn't hear what's truly going on. So I'm glad to hear that uh, you're supportive of that, so we can have our work sessions, our admin sessions um, here. I know the reporters would be happy about it, because they've asked me about it before. Brad smiling. <laughs> yeah. and, um, Anything I say in admin, I can say out here, too. I <laughs> yeah. never have to worry about what my opinion is on something normally, so. Well. Okay. Anything okay. else? I'm trying to think here. It's kind of surprised you. I said yes, huh? You know, you almost almost stunned, huh? You agreed for, with me for once, so. <laughs> yeah, Not that once. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Not once. Twice. You wrote it down. You okay. dated it? <laughs> All right. Get a signature, blood drawn. Um, yeah, that's good to be it for today. You made me happy. Thank you. Okay. 
Yeah. Are we ready for enough. our uh, public hearing? Yeah. Yeah. We can do that and then go to the rest of it afterwards. Grace, I have a real quick public hearing to do. Sorry, Mary, I told you 11 o'clock, and that's what I saw when he sent out the thing. I didn't know it got moved to 1120. I talked to the clerk today. I'm sorry. I spent a lot of time on the phone with the mayor yesterday afternoon. Kristen Brannon for the Special Purpose Flood <coughs> Damage Reduction Resolution. And morning, I Kristen. promise I'll be quick. So. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners. We're here for our second public hearing for an amendment to our Special Flood Hazard Area Redu Dam Flood Damage Reduction Resolution. We have received a request from the Ohio Department of Develop or, uh, Ohio Department of Natural Resources to update Section 6.3 of our resolution. This has to do with violations and penalties of work being done in a flood area. There are three changes that they are recommending. The first one is that we remove the classification of offense as being a minor misdemeanor. Now it will be a strict liability only. The, they also recommend placing a cap on fines of $300 per day, which is not in our current resolution. And they also recommend that we add a statement to provide for the repayment of court costs and expenses involved in a case when it does go to trial. So those are the three changes that we are recommending at this time. Okay. Do we open it up for public? Anybody from the public wishing to address this issue? Seeing none. Uh, commissioners, any questions? No. Jerry, do we? No, it's just, it's just a procedural right. thing okay. that's. Um, okay, make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Do we, we need, need a motion? A resolution to amend section 6.3 of the flood damage reduction resolution. I will make that motion. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Okay, now, <laughs> land bank. Thank you, Commissioner Kowski. Uh, today we're gonna talk about the land bank. Uh, it's been something that this board in different versions has worked on for over two years. Uh, the law was established in late 2008, Senate Bill 353, allowing Cuyahoga County to enter in the land bank to help clean up an array of issues in regards to housing and commercial. Uh, Lorraine County, again, has been working on this for two years. We could have probably moved forward last year on it, but two of the, well, we had a big changeover in all of the administrations across the county. So to move ahead of time and do rules based on administrations that were leaving, I had recommended to the board and in discussions with our peers across the state that with new people come in who are going to decide the direction of how the land bank is going to perform within the communities and what services it's going to offer it was based to wait until the new administrations came in. They have since. I'd like to thank Lorraine and Larry who both sent resolutions endorsing moving forward with the land bank. Just got one from uh, Oberlin too, didn't we, yesterday? Yes. Do we get one from Oberlin? We got one from I'm sorry, Oberlin yesterday. I, okay, thank you, Oberlin, also, not to ignore you. Uh, we have put together a ton of paperwork. We have a nice presentation. I believe Commissioner Kokosi is going to allow comments from the entities here. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to move forward on this, hopefully, with filing for articles of incorporation so we can move forward and have a chance to take a grab at the $75 million in settlement money that Attorney General DeWine is going to be bringing in. Uh, He's saying mid-May to end of May that money will be available and based on match amounts and counties that have land banks will rank higher in regards to getting some of that grant money here. So I guess I will turn it over to you, Mr. Metzger. Rank Thanks. higher, so we don't need to have the land bank. It's no. just we rank higher. Yeah, if you don't okay. have the land bank, though, the odds are we're only, there's only 44 counties allowed to have land banks in the state of Ohio based on 60,000 overpopulation will be about the ninth or 10th one to actually get it done because Summit's in the process. I was with Summit County the other day, uh, Eileen Shapiro, and she said they're ready to go on theirs. So if we're in the game, and we'll have some discussion on that, but yeah, that ranks you higher in regards to receiving that money before it's all gone. Because in light of $75 million or $70 million, whatever it ends up being, that's not a lot of money to cover the issues statewide. Sure. Well, that's Definitely true. Good morning. morning. Um, can I put it on the computer to yes, go through the yeah. presentation? Or would no, you have to make it up as you, you go along. You should be ready, right. Pat. I <laughs> uh, just want to briefly share some information regarding the land reutilization corp formation. Um, 
In general, it seems like a pretty effective vehicle to attend to unproductive land in the county, uh, considering uh, the fact that that land has an influence that's negative and a decreased market. Uh, it results in some unfunded costs and really has a reduction in quality of place. Um, here we have basically the Realization Corp is authorized under 1724 of the ORC to be formed. And here's some details on um, some of the activities that it, it, it's allowed to conduct. Facilitating reclamation and rehabilitation, efficiently hold and manage vacant abandoned property, assist government entities and others with uh, disposition of these and in the end it does promote some economic housing development in the county and the region. Um, here's just some of the statutory language or statutory structure that helps put it in place. Originally or originally the House Bill 313 set the groundwork but um, then on the yeah. ORC we got 5722 which helps with the formation of a utilization program. Uh, the organization has to be put together under 1724 of the ORC. And just for common language, it's just referred as land bank. Um, the mission, generally speaking, is to try and return the vacant, tax foreclosed, or underutilized property to productive use. And we want to assist political jurisdictions with putting this land together to, uh, you know, have a healthy, productive community. Uh, here you can see some of this is focused a little bit on foreclosures, but the land that's available to be uh, put into this program can be abandoned, uh, vacant. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically foreclosed homes, which is what this chart refers to. And you can see they've been with us and are, are a consistent issue throughout at least the last decade here. It's dropped off a little bit in the last year, but I, I'm not sure how, you know, whether that's just a processing issue or not. But it did spike in 7, 8, 9, and 10. And those are some significant reasons why we want to attend to this. Um, like I said earlier, some of the effects of foreclosure, but also vacant and abandoned property, too. Uh, we have some likely impacts. You know, it's an increase in abandoned, vacant stock. It's really a decrease, causes a decrease in the value of surrounding homes, unfunded costs, and municipal services. There's increased costs to other property owners. You know, it depletes the market potential and decreases the quality of place again, like, like we said. Uh, some of the activities outlined under 5722 are to allow the acquisition and holding and disposition of tax delinquent or close an abandoned property. And they're pretty thoroughly defined in sections 0.02 through 10. Um, ultimately, the property emerges with a clear title, it's free of lien, and uh, encourages better marketability and redevelopment. Um, if these properties linger over a long period of time, the law provides for public auction over after 15 years. So then you can dispose of your inventory. Uh, and again, some of the reasons why an LRC may be needed uh, is that the underutilized land, it, demonstrate, it, it demonstrates increased unfunded costs, uh, there's presently really no broad-based coordinated effort to marshal resources to address the problem. And it's a continuous, remains a continuous strain on local taxpayers and communities. Um, formation steps <clears throat> are fairly uh, forthright in the law, uh, although there's some back and forth that needs to be done. The first step really is that the Board of Commissioners creates by resolution uh, an LRC. Um, following that, uh, the Board of Commissioners would request the Treasurer to create and file or create articles of incorporation. And once they're accepted, then they're filed. And the Commissioners then would uh, pass a resolution defining the Board of the LRC, which can be rolled into that initial setup uh, resolution that you would do as well. This is a chart that you've probably seen in other presentations, but it really gives a good ladder diagram of how the process flows. And uh, I think it flows a lot more smoothly than the chart looks. <laughs> um, the board structure itself is set under 1724 of the revised code. Uh, required members are the county treasurer, at least two commissioners, representatives of the largest municipality, 
and then uh, it requires that one of the representatives on the board have uh, real estate experience and I think we could find that pretty easily <laughs> uh, board responsibilities then following are to create a land utilization plan so there's got to be some you know cohesiveness to it uh, it's going to create and approve governance and operations the basic business uh, undertakings of the organization um, naturally it's going to develop a conflict of interest policy uh, provide notice it's responsible for providing notice and entering an agreement with county officials so there's some interchange with the board and then uh, it may contract with a third party under assignment uh, for a scope of services for effectiveness or at the board's desire. Um, part of the land reutilization plan ought to be, it seems, to establish programming activities that uh, address blight and nuisance abatement, housing and econo economic development, and there's some broad authority under 1724 as a special CIC to engage in these activities. Uh, again, the plan wants to put wants to put the uh, purpose and mission of the Reutilization Corp in place and give it some structure, and then outline the implementation activities to achieve the mission. Uh, back to the start. Here's an example of one of the missions we, which seems seems to work. It's general. It wouldn't necessarily be our mission unless the board uh, wanted to make it that to promote and facilitate the reclamation, rehabilitation, and reutilization of vacant, abandoned, tax foreclosed, and other real property in the county to the fullest extent possible within the legal and fiscal limitations applicable. That's a good cover-all, but you may, you know, you may want to edit that. Um, specific activities can be purchase and receive, hold, manage, lease, lease purchase, or otherwise acquire and sell, convey, transfer, lease, that, that whole list is is, uh, I don't think it's necessarily exclusive, but it's a good sampling of what we can do. And again, another uh, purpose is to purchase tax certificates at auction, negotiated sale or from a third party who's a holder of the tax certificates. Um, that's a little more complex and you, know, you can see that. Uh, there are various sources of funding that are allowed by law for this, the primary is uh, penalties and interest on delinquent taxes and assessments. Secondary, um, as a property would come through the program, it's uh, either rehabbed or demolished or repurposed in some way. Then the proceeds of that can roll back in to help with funding. And there's other options that, that are, you know, grants, credits, tax increment financing. I mean, those are, those are available, but more complex again, uh, requiring a, a little more broad base. Some useful outcome, outcomes we've identified already, uh, first and foremost is demolition, because I think that may be uh, really on the slate. Uh, we can hold for strategic assembly of land for economic development or other purposes. Uh, park and green space creation. Uh, we, can res we can create uh, agreements with responsible developers who've been vetted appropriately to uh, put this back into the marketplace and make it productive again, which is the goal of the program sell the neighbors for side lot yards, uh, facilitate clean up urban garden, gardens is always, a, you know, is always an option too. Uh, some of the benefits too may be to slow speculation and flipping, although that's sometimes a market effect that's hard to control. Uh, you can contribute to stabilizing housing and tax bases, improve quality of life, advance urban and land use planning, and uh, we always like to have economic development as a, as a focus there because that really is part of the of the program that's just it in brief i hope uh Jim. if you had any questions I, I may be able to answer them or point oh. you in the right direction mm -hmm. probably at this time is dan here yes maybe we bring the treasurer up because he's been working hand in hand with us on that because actually the powers lie with the commissioners with agreement with the county treasurer <laughs> that was a nice presentation mm -hmm. thank you you know, the land bank isn't, a, you know, the end all. We all know that. There's too big a problem on that. But as Ted mentioned before, that uh, the state and the federal government, unless we have a land bank, we're not going to get any of the money. And this is why we got to start going with this land bank. Um, I've been going to these uh, presentations since 2008. 
when Cuyahoga County, better known as Disneyland, liked all these different ideas and crazy I to try to get to do something. And they had the problems there. And the sad part, there's been land banks for years in the state of Ohio, but it didn't have teeth. Now it has some teeth to do something. So I recommend, you know, we have to have this land bank just to get things going. Thank you. Any questions, board? Well, yeah, I do have some questions. Um, in the presentation, you said that the local entities can get assistance. How's the ranking? Uh, maybe we haven't got this far into it. The ranking for assistance. Can I do that? Yes. If you don't mind. No, I, I know you've been working. That's on been it. doing the mechanicals, but actually, there's a process here, and I've got hundreds of pieces of paper on this, but probably something. I'll that's go sit down and then. Okay, hundreds. thanks, Dan. Not to bore you. Uh, and for those of you who might want to look more into this, Cuyahoga County has a Cuyahoga County Land Bank website, which I would hope someday we would mirror with available properties and stuff. But they do have a great page of frequently asked questions. And the way it's normally set up, and again, these are things, and almost everybody, be it Hamilton County, Lucas County, Franklin County, they all have the same guidelines we all live by. Uh, but when you're talking about how it's done, let me get to the right page so I'm saying the right words. Again, sorry for the getting the right pages. Uh, it says in the process here, working with all the local political subdivisions based on their requirements and what they'd like done, and then it comes into the land bank. The land bank doesn't go over the municipals on how it's going to be operated. It's actually when you form all your rules and regs, everybody does this, they take recommendations. We have a large procedure that we have to go through and there's many options the land bank can go forward on. Cuyahoga <coughs> County actually started it. They actually worked a deal with the banks, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, that on their real estate, you know, owned homes, that they actually gave them to the land bank at a dollar a piece as an example of what can be done. But the county wouldn't, the county land bank wouldn't go in and determine that would be based on an up approach on the neighborhoods or commercial properties that would need to be addressed. Is that pretty close? I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah, no, I guess <coughs> more detail into it. If we, for this year, uh, the, um, folder that we got with all the numbers and the cost um, we're looking at uh, seven hundred and sixty four thousand dollars roughly correct correct <coughs> and out of that seven hundred sixty four thousand it's not a lot of money I mean um, the cost to maintain it do you have a number of what it's going to look like no we don't have a cost of maintaining it the the uh, with regard to the question I was asked on specific project determination and priorities I think what I'm hearing here uh, a little bit piecemealed is that those priorities would be established in each individual community and then the land bank would work with those communities on those priorities uh, as we move forward one of the big things the land bank is going to do initially is to uh, more than likely be doing mostly demo in the beginning and taking those properties that are abandoned and delinquent and have been lingering on the uh, tax rolls uh, and working through the treasurer and auditor to move them into the land bank and then start processing them for uh, either uh, clearing of the site or redeveloping the property for further use. Uh, so a lot of it's going to go into maintenance and, and, and doing those specific tasks. Right, and what I'm looking at is when you have multiple entities that are actually applying for this, mm -hmm. how is it going to be determined which entity is going to get that? Well, again, and they'll have to be priority list. It'll have to be established. Figuring right. that if you your number was seven hundred fifty thousand roughly, right. the average cost of, of clearing even clearing a piece of property if it was a demo uh, can run in about twenty five thousand dollars a property, sometimes more. Uh, it doesn't leave you a lot of a well, lot of properties. Right, and I mean we're going to need to hire employees to run correct. this, correct? Do correct. we know how many employees that we're looking at hiring? N not yet, but I, I envision there's going to be at least be two or three employees uh, working uh, full time at this. Okay, so with benefits and everything, probably around seventy-five, eighty thousand for all three per employee. Oh, I don't think it'll be quite that high. Uh, the uh, 
I haven't really established that, but you would have mm -hmm. one one senior staff member and and, and a couple of so you know, fifty thousand each with benefits, maybe too low. Yeah, I, I think that's average. You know, for a right. department salary between one hundred and fifty okay. and two hundred thousand sounds reasonable. All right, so two hundred thousand. So we're going to have roughly about a half million dollars to play with, as far as doing the. Can I interrupt there though, please? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, that last year was the highest year ever, and probably going to bring. Did Dan leave us again? No. Nope. Good. Dan, so Isn't we can talk to money because I've been meeting a lot with Dan Telerik on how this has been done. And we took basically a 10 year average on you can't figure a 750,000. Right. That was one year, the highest year last year. Probably average. your best uh, best guess would be about $600,000 a year. Average if out. you do the 5% additional. But then mm -hmm. don't we get a match on that? No, you we have to apply for it. We but don't we hope get to anything. get a match. There may be some external funds that are available if we have match monies for those funds. Obviously, uh, the Attorney General is sitting on $75 million right now, and he has indicated very strongly that those communities that are able to have match monies will be, will be able to have priority on gaining some of those funds. But that's not a repetitive fund either. That's, that's going to be a depletion fund, and once that $75 million is gone, it's going to be gone. So we may see some of that, but it won't be a continued revenue stream. Well, here's, here's quotes from uh, Attorney General DeWine. In regards to the, he said, talk about shutter homes, draw arsons, vandals, scrap metal thieves, the pro look at those problems. He's setting aside 75 million of the state's mortgage settlement money to fund the demos. His quote is, I wanted to make a bold statement, set an example, and say that our state's never going to be the great state we want to be when we have neighborhoods that are being eaten alive by these homes. I think that's a telling mm -hmm. issue there. And when we get into the funding, we have to be conservative because hopefully mm -hmm. the foreclosures are going to go down and the amount of delinquent real estate taxes will go down. As your delinquent tax, you know, if the delinquent taxes go down, There's that means there'll be less money, uh, less money in the DRETEC fund. Right, so we can't That's do an full The perfect example is you would not have a DRETEC fund because you've, everybody's paid all their taxes. Correct, <laughs> then we'd have no funding whatsoever. And that would eliminate that possibility, but let's face it, that's never gonna happen. The, we never gonna, say never. There's going to be a large requirement for maintenance of the properties and, and ongoing development. It sounds like a lot of money. It, it really isn't for the amount of work that's out there to do. Uh, so how many properties be affected initially is, is hard to determine. Um, some of the cities already have passive land banks that they have an inventory in those passive land banks and they're struggling right now to do maintenance on those those properties they have in their passive land banks and there's been considerable amount of discussion that uh, if not all but some of those properties may come over to the land reutilization corporation so that we can go in and do some maintenance on those properties and clean them up a bit the city's been pretty good they've done a really good job but they, they're limited too they don't have big maintenance crews go out people dump on these lots they end up being you know uh, abandoned garbage and so forth they need help in those areas too with their current inventory so there's a lot to do and this is a, a minor amount of resource to do it in so it's going to be it's going to take a lot of leveraging and collaboration to uh, to move forward with this mm -hmm. right. it's just a start filing for the articles in corporation gives us the ability to go forward on assembling this and then getting the feedback from the community on the issues they want to address. And I was talking with Jennifer Fender Bosch from Avon Lake this morning. They have some issues that they have on REOs. Yeah. Uh, it was a nice discussion we had. I mean, every community has those issues out there. And by starting this, I mean, the EPA has actually land bank and revitalization funds you can apply for when it comes to you know areas that have some issues. The Kristen's here. So one, of, yeah, one, of, one of the one of the the major advantages to to a land bank is the ability to clean the title of property once it goes to the land bank. There's a lot of REOs and abandons that, that are available out there that, that sit and because they, they're too expensive to deal with. Uh, and when, when the property through process, and I don't really want to go through all those processes, there's a, 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 mecha a mechanism identified in the Ohio Revised Code of how to do those things. When those, pro when those properties do pass to the land bank, uh, they will be clean of any encumbrances, liens, uh, and monies owed on them. That's been another problem with passive land banking, trying to get through that process. Uh, so I think that there's going to be some REO pro projects that are going to be, uh, REO properties are going to be donated to the land bank. Mm -hmm. I, I think that there's going to be more forfeit, forfeitures of properties that are non-productive and just too expensive for, uh, say, a land, an absentee landowner mm -hmm. to, to maintain going to the land bank. The potentials for the things that can be done are huge, 
but it's going to take it's going to take some time. Uh, but it's the only mechanism to give clean title to the property uh, would be to utilization of the land bank. Right. Well, uh, with gonna, um, the county cannot use CDBG funds for the city of Lorraine and Elyria because they're entitlement cities. Um, but can the city of Lorraine contribute to their CDBG money to the land bank? Chris, I, I, I'm sorry. Was there? A, uh, I see the land bank working in collaboration to the initiatives that are already underway, not <laughs> replacing the okay. initiatives that are already underway. And, and that's where the collaboration and, and specific sitting down with each community and doing programming together is going to come in. Uh, the, the cities have struggled, but they, they've, been, they've been combating this now for some time. And what they need is they need another tool. And they need the land bank to become partners with them so they have more tools uh, to go out and combat the problems with, with blight and unsightly properties. Uh, and in some of our, uh, our bigger communities, you know, crack houses and abandoned properties that become magnets for all kinds of illicit activity. So I think together they're going to leverage a greater outcome. Okay. Uh, the one concern I do have is schools. They're, they're going to be the ones that are going to be hit the hardest with this. If I'm looking at this right, uh, City of Lorraine schools, and I hope you talk to the um, school district on it, about $61,000 for 2011. City of Lorraine schools would probably be the largest uh, uh, amount of money that would go into the land bank that would be redirected towards land bank issues from payouts, yes. All right. uh, and, this I is not, and this is not touching their tax. You're not touching the real property tax. It's the 5% of the land penalty bank. and the interest so they're getting all their taxes this land bank doesn't take the taxes due them it's the penalties and interest five percent of that amount right but the, that, the land bank but they get they would get that money if they didn't have the land if bank, we didn't they have the money, got right that. if we're going on a 10-year average that each community whether it be the lorraine schools or wellington village or the city of Elyria or the city of lorraine you're going to lose if you go to take it up to five percent an additional delinquent for the for the DRETAC, point one eight percent, one fifth of one percent they would lose, but they're going to gain in the overall. Right. Right. And, and I, to tell you the truth, you know, I, I understand you want to defend things with the schools, but you know, a lot of times the schools, I know they're out there fighting hiring attorneys to come to the board of revision you know to try to keep the values up you know that's money that they spend this is money that's going to help them out increase the values of the uh, school districts because the number one issue as the county treasurer that I feel and as a as a uh, citizen of Lorraine County is we got to get rid of these houses these houses are all over the county whether they're in the southern part northern part west east we got to get rid of those houses it will bring the values up of the whole neighborhoods it'll stop there's going to be a reevaluation of property next year we all know that's probably the value of Lorain County the whole whole county itself is going to go down we have to do something to start prompting it up I know this is just the first step but as I used to say, a, a step of a, uh, a journey of a thousand miles begins with that first step. And we have to get this step rolling where we can, you know, you're talking about all these other logistics, who we're going to hire, how many people. We got to get this thing on the road and get it going. In regards to that, Dan, also, you got to remember that as we go through the reevaluation of properties, these failed properties and a lot of the indirect harm they're causing are the abutting property owners who's seeing their houses drop in value. Well, that's absolutely right. If so you've got a couple, losing, the homeowners losing their property value, being devalued because of these vacant, decrepit properties. That if they were down, it would stabilize their neighborhood and keep their values where they're supposed to be. So, I mean, that's a direct and/or indirect benefit to authorize and go forward with the land bank. That it's going to make these neighborhoods better and keep their values. Again, who wants to, if you go to some of the neighborhoods around the county and you've got four foreclosures sitting on it that the bank won't let go or won't move forward on. The taxes aren't being paid. The houses are in disrepair. Who's going to go pay market value for a home that's up for sale there from a single family homeowner? It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So the entire community suffers on this countywide. The schools have less property value. Uh, so they're not going to be able to get chances to bump on renewals or I mean, replacements. I mean, it, it just covers such a large gambit of the problems within Lorain County. I mean, we're no different than a smaller Cuyahoga or a smaller Hamilton or a smaller Franklin. We have those problems. We have the wealthier outer rings. You get to the inner ring, 
it's suffering but I've yet to see a company that moves to this community who doesn't have residents from all communities working at their facilities and when you're talking 12 or 14 dollar an hour jobs those people coming here to work are going to stay here and work instead of leaving the community are going to buy in our urban areas because houses are more affordably priced as starting up as families starting up and then they move into the better homes as they establish themselves and get raises and improve themselves so it's a benefit throughout the county for a small portion of the penalty and interest money Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing I'm looking at is just making sure that uh, everyone who's aware and who's going to reduce, lose a small percent is aware of it. I think throughout the county, everybody's aware that we've been talking about land banks for a couple of years, and everybody, school districts especially, are aware of it, and they didn't come here to argue with us at IC. Uh, I think it was more the government officials who are interested in how this is going to happen, because they're going to be major participants and how this is going to go forward, whether it's Avon Lake or North Ridgeville, Lorraine, Elyria, the townships. Yeah. You know, buildings Dan and I were talking this morning. I mean, you may have an old barn that kids are vandalizing and are partying all night out in the townships. No clue. Might be yeah. under foreclosure. This can all end up in land bank and clean up your area. Rid yourself of some crime and nuisance and vandalism. I mean, there are just the benefits that this can do. All kinds of opportunities for Lorraine County, every part. And all we need is the direction from each political subdivision on how they like to see that done. Yeah. And I'm just going to emphasize this again and beat it to the ground. This is for Lorraine County. It isn't for one specific. It's an advantage to Lorraine County. Period. Absolutely. The I sad agree. part about it, it's got to be funded, and everybody you can't have the. You know, everybody wants something, but it costs. And unfortunately, this would be a tremendous advantage over the years. This is going to that six hundred thousand dollars we're talking about is probably going to just increase the, the values of the property throughout the county it's going to it's just going to bring more revenue in in the long run that's my thoughts on this you have to have seed money and yeah. that's going to start it i mean right now we're looking at at the six hundred thousand dollar rate take out uh, people we're going to um have to pay it's about 16 homes a year at uh, Mr. Cordes's rate of $25,000. That so, I... Again, I, I just took an average on, on demoing. A lot of these properties are going to be older. There's going to be mitigation issues with regards to um, uh, lead-based paints, uh, possible asbestos, uh, and, and could be other things. Also, you know, a few, a few items uh, of interest are the land bank is not strictly uh, restricted to residential property. It can also be used in... Um, uh, commercial applications so uh, if it grows big enough and it's managed properly and it can develop additional revenue streams from the redevelopment efforts uh, there could also be work with the downtown uh, folks to, uh, towards uh, doing some issues with redevelopment in the downtown areas and the land bank is also given the authority to borrow and leverage money so depending on the um, the average amount of money that would be collected using it as a uh, revenue stream it can it can be uh, uh, borrow money against that and and leverage those funds to do larger projects initially uh, so clearly it has some abilities that are not possessed by the passive land banking uh, regulations that are out there right now for our municipalities uh, and and so the tools that are going to be provided through this legislation will really amplify those uh, uh, abilities they have now yeah. We, we can also contract out with um, companies who would go in and take apart a house that they can use materials to uh, recycle, like bricks and you know different things I like that, which would reduce sure. the amount of um, demolition. I would, I would see the I would see the reclamation uh, issue as part of, uh, and right now there's a lot of reclamation reclamation going on. Uh, when demo work happens, when most people bid their demo these days, uh, they're they're looking at the potential of uh, reclaiming uh, certain um, hardwares that are seem to be a very hot mark market these days. Plus, your 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 coppers, aluminums, uh, those things that can be scrapped. So th there's there's a lot of things that can be built into that that can can generate additional uh, uh, cost constraints for demolition of the property. And, of course, some of the properties may be used as side yards uh, with adjacent property owners. Uh, there's, there's some potentiality there. That could return the property to a revenue uh, uh, source for the municipalities or school districts or those affected. You know, it's not just municipalities, school districts. It's libraries. 
it's townships, uh, villages, uh, anybody that has a little piece of the pie is has a vested interest and is going to be putting skin in the game to see to, if we can improve uh, the housing stock here in Lorain County. Mm -hmm. And if we start tearing down houses, people who have some of these houses that they're just sitting on just might get the idea that maybe we should fix them up. <laughs> that might be another incentive. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just one question before we open up to the floor. On the, the board members, and that, I know we talked about mm -hmm. this, and I think it's be good for the public to know. Um, it's going to be the largest city, which will be the city of Lorraine, so the mayor, Chase Rittenhart, uh, Ted Kahlo, myself, and then Lori Kukowski would be sitting on as the uh, realtor experience and then the treasurer, is that correct? Well, that would be the first form of it. That right. was it put up in discussions based on other models to get it up and running. Right. The board by law can be five, seven, or nine members. But in this case here, moving forward with the five members to start it up, to get it going, it can always be reviewed, revised, changed. It's a government <laughs> entity, so. Okay. All right. I've had those talks, actually, uh, Mayor Brenda, has been very active in this. I mean, she ran on it last year and talking about the need for this and stuff. That'd be Dan, I, she could be our alternate mm -hmm. and, you know, attend the meetings for that point. They're all public meetings Absolutely. anyway. So, and then the board, once we get this structured and going and see what kind of money, what kind of impact it's going to have, the board, there also can be a township, by codes as a township representative, if there's more than 10,000 residents in a township, we don't meet that qualification. Right. So, so they weren't ignored. I just want to bring it up so everybody was aware of. And Carlisle's our largest. And Barry, what are you, about 9,000? About 75. 75, okay, all right. Then. But yeah. the code does say if you have a township over 10,000, it shall sit on the board. Right, and with the townships, they equal about 57,000. I know we talked about this. Um, if we did go to a seven-part um, panel, uh, possibly bring in the township association president Correct. Uh, to sit on the board so you could represent all the townships. So. Yeah, I think that's once we get this up, articles and corporations, and figure the funding and meet with all the communities on how they want to go forward with it, figure out what kind of dollars they're going to have, and apply if we can do any bonding out based on revenue stream and or the grants that are available to figure out what kind of impact we're going to have within our communities. I said this is a startup. It took Cuyahoga mm -hmm. County a while. And they put, what were you talking? Cleveland just put $13 million into theirs? Or was that? That's Columbus? Franklin County put $13 million in to try to match the money. Cleveland has put extra money in it. Okay. Montgomery County, which is sitting on roughly between 10 and $15 million, has been now their third or fourth year that they, they were going to go in the year 2008, have their own uh, land bank. They're still sitting on that money trying to figure out the board, how they're going to do things. I hope we're a little bit uh, better than they are <laughs> down in the town. They're more organized, and they just still haven't been able to get things going, and they do have money to spend down there. Unfortunately, we don't, but they got great seed money down there, and they're sitting on it, there, and we there, need this to be done. There, there's several ways to get into the game faster with regard to funds now now clearly um, that fee has to be done by code of the boards and we're not uh, ready today with those resolutions so we're anticipating what that um, uh, increase in the DRETAC fee may be and and that's still going to be open for your consideration at a future board meeting uh, but once that's established we can advance money into the the land bank based upon what we think the projected revenues are and or bond out to, uh, um, to uh, gain a significant portion of the funding up front so that we can hit the ground running rather than sit for a year waiting for the money to trickle in mm -hmm. and then think about doing something. I'd rather be doing something rather than thinking about doing it. This won't go into effect actually the DREETAC until first draw next year. It'd be the settlement Basically, after the, the settlement, real estate right. settlement. So, I mean. Yeah, I don't so. believe he's got all the, uh, Senator, or, um, Mike DeWine doesn't have all the details done yet. Correct, right. he's saying May or middle to end of May he's expecting to receive the money. Now, I'm sure, I mean, right. until he knows the exact amount he's going to get total, he'll make his percentage, but he's been talking 75 million. That number's been going up and down per my discussions and with other commissioners and our commissioners associations, so. But it's still a goal we can shoot for, and if we're in the game, I'd still like to hear the comments from everybody who's here today, mm -hmm. but even though if we don't have everything else going, if maybe we can entertain filing for the articles of the corporation, giving the treasurer the ability to do that so we can start the process. And I was in Columbus last Thursday, and the same thing, that $75 million is going up and down, and let's face it, people with land banks are going to be getting the money. 
and we're talking about your Cuyahoga counties, Lucas counties, you're talking about Franklin, Hamilton. So we got to get in the game to get part of that. And that's basically how they're going to start. Right. Uh, any information? The, the, the people with a land bank are showing an interest that they actually want to do something. Right. Uh, any information as far as how much they're going to take uh, by percentage that you put in as far as uh, matching funds? No, that no. we don't. Like as Ted mentioned, there's so you hear so many rumors okay. and so many. This has been going on for a couple of months. All we know is the attorney general says he's got 75 million dollars coming, but nobody knows what's going to be administrative, what's actually going to be used to tear down houses, what's going to be used to buy purchase things. So it's still kind of all up in the air yet. They don't know all the parameters of how that money is going to be spent or how it's going to be dished out. But the way he's saying it, he keeps talking about the demolitions as a priority. That seems to be the number one issue, right. correct? That seems to be the direction they're going in, and I would hate to not be in that flow of dollars. No. That's why everybody's going on. Someone's getting ready to do theirs. Franklin just got theirs. I mean, that's why they're moving is because that ability to chase those dollars and I would hate Lorraine County to miss out on that opportunity. True. Me too. Let's open it up to members of the audience. I've said one of the both mayors want to come up and more than both. We've got all kinds. I warmed it up. We got North Ridgeville. Mm -hmm. Who else? Mm -hmm. Morning Holly. Is it Morning, afternoon? Mayor. It's the afternoon. Good. Is that what it is? It it's hard is. to tell what it is. Well, uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak. I appreciate it, commissioners. Um, let me first say I applaud you for advancing this conversation because I think it's critical to our county. We all know what kind of impact uh, foreclosures have had on our county, uh, both residential and we have some commercial um, foreclosure situations in the city of Elyria that can also benefit from this. Um, I won't re, uh, revisit all the benefits. Um, we're also looking at in the city of Elyria, obviously demolition is at the top of our list as well. So we are in agreement with that priority. Uh, we have about 300 properties, both residential. And, and certainly I, I also, again, am about being expedient with this. I want to position our county to receive the money. Um, but having the commissioners, having three seats on the initial seat, and with the, with the openness of potentially uh, expanding the board, um, I agree with, but I, I obviously I prefer um, the original incorporation process to include an expanded board. And, and really the reason is that as we develop the member of memorandum um, and um, memorandum of understanding and go through the process of incorporation, uh, we do have an opportunity to have some dialogue that is going to set the stage for a strong foundation. The city of Elyria would very much like to be part of that conversation. Um, we're going to be looking at the required legal process and framework to create the nonprofit. We're going to look at the required commitments and funding mechanisms. Uh, we're going to be looking at components of a memorandum of understanding that includes the protocols for priorities for acquisition and uh, disposition of tax foreclosed and other properties, process for the maintenance, rehabilitation, and demolition of those structures, and presentation of cases to land banks in various communities. And there's going to be decisions related to how those priorities are set. There's also going to have to be a conversation about how to support this land bank. And, and Mr. Williams brought up um, uh, dollars and cents issues associated with supporting the land bank. Please keep in mind um, that I think a, an important part of the incorporation process that could benefit from an expanded board is looking at the current assets that are in place in the two largest cities and, and our townships and other cities in the community. We have community development departments. Uh, we have economic development departments. and because we are so committed to this process and we think it's so important in both of our cities. Um, I, I can't speak for Lorraine. I'm sure Mayor Rittenauer will do that very well for himself in a moment. But for in, on behalf of the city of Elyria, we're very interested in ent entering into a conversation with the county where we might be able to share some resources to minimize those, those staffing costs and maximize what we already have in place. So I would just make a case for um, moving expediently, um, but also potentially opening up that initial incorporation process to include some others because I think you might find um, that it in fact strengthens the, the original process and puts some resources in place that you might not otherwise have. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. 
I mean, would you like to uh, take that under consideration now? I mean, with 300 vacant homes right now, I, I wouldn't have a problem with uh, expanding the board to seven. We don't have to do any board work today, Tom. Uh, well, that's, that's all got to be discussion. That's why we're right. having open discussion. Of homes and commercial right, exactly. Right. Oh, you're, that's your homes and commercial properties. Okay, right. yeah. thank you, Mayor. Rittenauer. Chase Rittenauer, 2515 Garfield Boulevard, Lorain, Ohio. And I won't, uh, I, I think we've, we've had a pretty good discussion uh, summarizing some of the, the benefits of the land bank, and Mayor Brenda certainly brought up uh, some good points. To give you an idea, in the city of Lorain, vacancy right now, uh, we're, we're approaching 1,000. In fact, some estimates around 1,100. And the real scary part is that with the settlement that the banks entered into, now that they've entered into their settlement, there is the notion of this shadow inventory that exists and foreclosures are actually going to increase because banks are going to be more active in going after them and uh, some of our estimates have that number going up to 1600 at the end of the next four years so this is an issue that is going to continue to be an issue and i i firmly believe and i'm happy that uh, lorraine city council unanimously supported the creation of this land reutilization corporation because of that and it's not just a Lorraine or an Elyria issue. It, its impact reverberates countywide. Um, there are so many cities and so many uh, entities that are having problems uh, with vacant property and abandoned property. And you know, a street with one vacant home, that vacant home reduces property values. A street with multiple vacant homes renders those properties worthless in many cases. And people are trapped in their neighborhoods. They're not, you know, the, the notion of buying a home as an investment, seeing that investment bear fruit, it's not happening. And I think it really is the issue of our time right now because the housing industry, in my eyes, is so tied to our economy, we've got to do something. And I would agree <clears throat> with the treasurer, this is not an end all. This is not the, the uh, you know, the, the only solution in the way that, that things are going to completely turn themselves around, but it is a step in the right direction. And you know, with that, I would say, uh, in terms of the money going into the land bank, there are other ways to generate revenue. Uh, some counties that have land banks have agreements with some of the lending institutions who just want to rid themselves of these properties. They will put the property into the land bank and come into an agreement, a uh, memorandum of understanding in some cases, where, you know, between $3,000, 3500 and up to $8,000 will follow that home into the land bank for the cost of maintaining it, the cost of demolition, the cost of rehab. Um, but we have to put ourselves in a position to be eligible for those dollars, not only from the state, but there's a bipartisan bill moving in Washington right now, sponsored by Representative La Tourette and Representative Fudge, and it was actually uh, debuted in, in the Slavic Village in Cleveland, which would do tax credits for bond or tax credit bonds. Um, it'd be an issuance of bonds that would go for demolition. And there would be a match that would be required but a land bank to me seems like a good way to start uh, that potential match. It's still in its infancy and certainly with you know, the presidential election this year, we'll see where that goes, but it has bipartisan support. The Michigan and Ohio delegations, uh, both Democrat and Republican, support this because they're seeing what's happening in these communities. I'll end my remarks on this. I know, Commissioner, I certainly uh, understand your concerns with uh, the funding and the dollars available in the land bank, which is why I'd like to uh, uh, reiterate what Mayor Brenda said, the City of Lorraine is willing to uh, dedicate some of its staff to helping manage the County Land Bank. Um, we believe it's that important uh, to do so. If there are ways we can help to mitigate costs, we certainly are willing to do that and want to have that discussion. And I'd also um, agree with Mayor Brenda in the board composition. I think we need to move quickly to get it incorporated, but while there's that incorporation step, before having uh, a meeting or before we really get into it, uh, I would support uh, Holly Brenda having a seat on the board as well as that other seat uh, potentially going to the Township Association president. This is a countywide land bank, so I, I would welcome you know, as many different uh, entities in and, and representation as possible because it is a countywide problem. It is not just a city problem. So many mayors from around this county and around this region that I've talked to, both larger and smaller than Lorraine, uh, have the same problem in some form, and this is a way to start tackling that problem. So, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor Gillick. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Dave Gillock from North Ridgeville, seven three zero seven Avon Belden Road. I appreciate the commissioners taking a look at the land bank, and I think it might be might be a tool uh, to have in your toolbox that can can benefit 
especially Elyria and Lorraine, the dev the the devil's always in the detail zone. That's where I have questions about uh, how it would function. You're already talking about issuing bonds and borrowing money. No, the possibility of. Mayor. Or the no, possibility the, the possi of. That, that's allowed under land bank. I understand it's allowed, but my question is, number one, where, who is standing behind those? Is it the land bank or is it the county? Uh, and then what happens, uh, $700,000, $600,000 in, in a situation like this isn't really a whole lot of money. If we start issuing bonds or borrowing money and the debt service becomes somewhat burdensome, then what happens? Well, how do you pay the debt service? Are we subject to an assessment or are we going to do something different with the, uh, the DRETAC funds? Uh, I have questions from the numbers I've seen. It looks like uh, our schools would uh, uh, probably be, lose about $18,000 a year. That's, that's a lot to our schools. Our city may be 7000 7, That may not be a big deal. Uh, but I just wonder how it's going to benefit. It, it seems to me that Lorraine and Elyria, uh, who I want to support, I'm, and I'm a great fan of regionalization, would be the prime beneficiaries of a land bank, though. So I really want to see how, how it works, uh, what the details are, and learn more about it. And uh, I would just, uh, one question, uh, Mayor Brenda talked about 300 foreclosures, and Mayor Rittenauer talked about 1,100. But they're both talking about banks, and it's my understanding you only use the land bank for uh, tax delinquencies, not bank foreclosures. What can so I wonder about those numbers. Uh, so I do have a lot of questions. I look forward to getting more information, uh, but I would certainly support uh, Mayor Brenda being a part of the board as they are the county seat. Uh, it is important to them, and I think the bigger board is... Uh, would be beneficial. Mayor, Thank you. Can I, answer, can I help you with a couple of those questions, though? And I don't think that's quite what Mayor Brenda was stating, that those were foreclosed homes or bank-owned properties. That was their problem overall. Uh, and in regards so to was. how it would operate, that would be, now I want to answer your questions that you had. And in my thing, because I spent most, the boards allowed me to do a lot of the work on this process, that it would be based on all the public input on where, when you're saying it's going to benefit Lorraine and Elyria more, maybe on quantity, but maybe not on quality. Maybe you have a targeted neighborhood that you have that problem, and Jeff might be good to answer that as a safety service director. If you have a neighborhood that has two or three possible homes that are causing a major issue in a neighborhood, it may benefit you more overall based on cost. It may not have the quantity, but the quality of the uh, demolition and or rehab might be a benefit to North Ridgeville. And that's every community is going to have that input in this on how they're going to want it done to address their needs. There's just an overall, but their code allows pages and pages of possibilities. Well, we North Ridgeville can also have demos done through the land bank. So this is not just Correct. for Lorraine and Elyria. Mm -hmm. I, under I understand well, that, but I do know you know, from when we had the neighborhood stabilization program and you had to have a cluster in a neighborhood, we couldn't find a cluster. I mean, I'm not saying we don't have a, 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 a house here and a house there that we have to deal with. We are dealing with them. Uh, you know, you mentioned the number of $25,000 to demolish a home. We're doing one this week, and the number is estimated between fifty and 60000 to take that right. down, not 25000 So right. that's 600000 may not go as far as you think. You know, Mr. Williams was talking about 16 homes. It might be eight, you know, but there's a lot of details that I think need to be explained and, and so that we can understand it. And I certainly, I think, you know, we get rid of a lot of these old homes, it's going to benefit the county. And, and I'm willing to take a look at that, but I just need more information. Thank you. Mayor, if you'd like, I can send you a ton of links. I can have okay. my assistant send you, I, I send you 20 or 22 this morning to print. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, another thing we could do is actually, ha Jim, you're supposed to get uh, some information on the number of homes possibly affected in the county, right? Right. I mean, it was a couple issues that, that the mayor raised. Um, one of the things that we quickly looked at is the availability of abandoned properties that are already on the tax rolls that could be 
uh, processed uh, through the mechanics detailed in the Ohio Revised Code. Working uh, with, with the banks would be um, another issue, not so much on foreclosure, but sometimes the banks uh, or mortgage companies or Freddie Mac and so forth, they may have properties that uh, for various reasons are not worth processing. Uh, that is, the value of the property is never going to be suitable to remove all the encumbrances upon the property and or the taxes owed on the property so they don't take them to market. Um, and then those properties continue to deteriorate. Most of the REOs held by financial institutions fall into disarray. They don't have a, a scheduled maintenance on those properties. So that's how you would work with them. Uh, but we, we want to get a list uh, and we will be developing a list of properties that currently would be eligible as determined to be abandoned and, and start looking at that first. Uh, foreclosure issues uh, have to be part of the process, but uh, they're further down on the continuum. Yeah, and when do you think you'll have that list together? Uh, hopefully soon. All right. I, I'm just thinking maybe we could actually schedule another presentation just for people that weren't um, weren't able to make it uh, today. Put something out that's a press release that we're going to do it in a week or two and um, maybe send this information over to the superintendents and to the mayors and the villages just so they're prepared for it and if they have any questions or concerns they can come in yes sir oh. name and address please. <laughs> <laughs> rick hood village of kipton i just uh, was wondering uh the monies that would be spent on demo uh, demolition of these properties uh would it be uh feasible to uh, help homeowners with at least the cost of the demolition in low interest loans to rehabilitate these properties and get them back into uh, you know productive status where they'd be generating taxable there is a rehab taxes again. component that you there can is go a through rehab the process for a rehab component but that's a small portion of it based on the available grant dollars. A lot of the money that we're going to be able to apply for is towards demolition because most cities and the county has we develop block grant funds that can go into rehab already. You're, you know what I'm saying? That's already oh, a level that's there. Uh, like the neighborhood stabilization money, we're in round three now. Uh, a lot of that had, the first money actually came out and 75% actually had to go to rehab, not demo. Is that correct, Don? Round two. Round two was 75%, had to go into rehab, not demo. Okay. So, I mean, there's already those type of programs out there. From so the why county? duplicate it? Oh, okay. I see. Okay. I yeah, don't know if, those... if there was an issue, we would come to the County Community Development Block Grant and be applied for. Well, the way but dollars are disappearing, I just wasn't sure there was anything left to do, anything like that. Well, we never know. Every two year session of Congress and or the state of Ohio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Heidecker, 24783 Riverview Drive, Columbia Township. I'm here as a trustee. I, how is this going to affect the townships? They're already doing things about their land. How are, you, how are we going to, what's the mechanisms? What's in place? Are you guys going to replace our zoning inspectors? Are you going to take on the, the workload of our dilapidated homes? No, there will be no replacement of that whatsoever. Uh, this would be in conjunction with working with the mechanisms you already have in place. Uh, the land bank wouldn't have the abilities uh, or possess the powers that the municipalities or the townships possess right now to deal with nuisance properties. Uh, one of the things that, that could happen, though, is at the end of that process, if it was uh, determining the property to be uh, in need of taking, once that's taken, a lot, a lot of times the, the townships and or uh, incorporated areas lack the resources to deal with the property once they do declare it a nuisance and have taken it. And at that point, the land bank can work with you to uh, clean that property and hopefully return it to some kind of productive use. Because we seem to have a good, we were sent out our 505 letters, but we had one gentleman had 13 acres. And you send a letter to a bank and saying, it's going to cost you this much to cut this grass or else we're going to do it or else it's going to cost you this much to have this dumpster come in here and clean it out. And it's done. We have, we send out maybe two uh, every two weeks. Granted, we're not as big as the cities. But how is this going to benefit the small cities and the township? The, with regard to uh, dumpsters and grass cutting, <clears throat> that's we, out. the land bank wouldn't be involved right. with that. But how and is that, this going to benefit us, the townships? Well, it could benefit you if you have a the dilapidated property that is sitting abandoned and has become 
uh, a magnet for um, you know criminal activity deterioration or is just simply you know, become an eyesore in the community and you want to remove it because it's decreasing the property value of the surrounding property owners those kind of properties don't just exist in cities I, I see them all throughout, throughout the community uh, they're, they're a little bit less prevalent I, I give you in the right. townships but they, but they still happen and and if you want to have those uh, removed and demoed and have those properties become productively used, this will give you the tool in the township to do that. So we, have, we would have to apply for a grant to have them taken down? Well, you wouldn't apply for a grant. You would work on uh, with the land bank to see if possibly the, the property was abandoned. If it wasn't abandoned, then you would work with your health department and zoning to have it declared a nuisance. And then either the property could be taken or it may be donated. There's a lot of times when there's out-of-county property owners that have received the property to a family. They live in California. They're not prepared to deal with it. Texas, on the road, Texas. Right. Uh, so we could actually work with them. Not all property has to be done and taking. Another thing that a land bank can do <coughs> is it actually can purchase property and it can either rehab it or clean the site. Now, those are things that after the land bank's running further down the road are going to be looked at. But uh, you may have an out-of-state property owner that really just, you know, will take a very <coughs> low sum of money to, to get out of the property. The problem is they can't get out of the property. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to make you laugh now because you guys tell them they now owe you $12,000 for mowing the lawn and doing all that for them, and which needs to be done. But in order for them to get out of the property, they've got to find that money. So we may be able to go in there and convince them to either donate or sell it at a very low cost to the, to the land bank and then work with making the, the township whole. So, so other words, any, anytime we do any grass cutting or garbage pickup, we put it on our taxes, it will not affect this land bank. We'll it will not affect money. the land bank at all, sir. It. The rules changed as I think January 1st, 2012 <coughs> was the full blown. That's why everybody's starting to get it going. Okay. There, there was a test period, let's say, would probably be the easiest way to talk about it, to let that get started. And now they've gone through that, and they were. That's where Cuyahoga came up with. Let's talk to Fred, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, and they do the properties at a dollar. I mean, there's just a world of things to do out there, and every land bank, with all its partners, has to craft what's best from the township, the village, or the city to address each need based on the amount of money we have yep. and what can get accomplished. I, 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 you've answered all my questions. I really do appreciate it. Okay, you know, great. I, thank you. Thank you. Dick, I would also add that one of the advantages is this is a little bit more permanent solution. You know, sometimes yeah, the townships come in and clean stuff up or well, do you know, stuff. You hear things and I just want to come here. Revert, so that this allows it to be addressed at a more permanent uh, basis. Good afternoon. Jennifer Fenderbosch, Councilwoman for the City of Avon Lake, 150 Avon Belden Road. And I think this is really a creative tool. I'm very familiar with what's going on in Hamilton County and how they have utilized this. And, and I agree with, uh, with what has been said before that the devil's in the, in the details. And one thing that I think would be very appreciated by the townships and the other cities would be to um, put together a bullet point list after this meeting as to what is expected and what is needed from the municipalities because as you said pre previously there's going to be a priority list that will be put together by the county commissioners however the municipalities and the townships will also need to be going through that process Can I answer that before going yes sir we can't do that till we actually form the land bank board today's meeting and is to form the land bank board no, no. Today's meeting is to give the county treasurer the ability to file for articles of incorporation so we can establish a land bank. It's a process we have to go through. The funding issue is another one. The board makeup is another one. The public meetings that we have to have. And then all the meetings once whoever's going to operate that because a not-for-profit and the Hamilton County model, which you said, put theirs in their port authority because they have bonding power. They have mm -hmm. some flexibility. It's a great place to park. I hope that's where ours ends up at. That's based on everything I've done and I've shared with my commissioners and talked about, I think Hamilton County is our best fit, something similar to theirs. Then we can start prioritizing and go through how we're going to do it with each community. The Township Association might decide to do it as a Township Association and prioritize all their needs based on their meetings. Uh, Avon Lake may do it one way, uh, Mayor Gillick from Ridgeville and not everybody's going to have their own ideas of how they want to be participants in the land bank. So I, this means about moving forward to file for articles of incorporation, not to confuse anybody. Everything else is discussion points. 
Okay, well, part of my discussion points I wanted to make was that Little Avon Lake, um, at this point, the schools would be giving up 37850 from the paperwork that, that, you're, that you were able to give me, and I appreciate that. Um, the city would be giving up 6122 which is only, it's 5%, so that the um, city and the schools would still collect in delinquent, ta they would still collect the tax, they just wouldn't be collecting the 5% because a 5% would be going into the land bank. Um, as all of you know, coming down the road, since there are discussion points, you know what's going to be happening at Avon Lake and the changes that will be occurring along the shoreway. And um, I was happy to hear that there are um, industrial and commercial properties that can also be placed into this land bank and that they can be held, they can be cleaned so that it's not just cleaned, I would believe, of tax liens, but also cleaned with EPA issues turning brownfields into green fields. EPA has it. I stated that earlier. I actually That's have correct. a cover sheet for that. And for those of you who don't know what she showed, it's the CEI plant. In yeah, the I'm sorry, it's the Genon plant. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Right, it's a gen on plant. Um, because this is what is, but I'm familiar with with Hamilton County. And actually, other corporations such as Duke has come in and they have actually assisted the land bank in Hamilton County. So they became a private and public partnership. And I hope that that model goes forward. Thank the, you very much. The, uh, Jennifer, with regard to Hamilton County, uh, we've been working on a lot of the paperwork that needs to come forward in the future. And we've looked at the Hamilton model. It's a, it's a real collaboration down yes, there. Yes, it is. Uh, and as everybody knows, and we've talked a lot here, every collaboration has growing pains. So we're all going to go through those growing pains here in Lorain County. We've proven we can collaborate before, it, but we've, we've struggled with it a little bit. But it, you, you brought up a great issue with that commercial property. Eventually, when, when things are rolling real well, the entity can apply for grants and leverage grants with the city and work collaboratively on um, residential. But there's also housing problems in the premier communities. Avon Lake is one of our premier communities, but yet they still struggle with some of those things. People stigmatize some of the older cities, but, but th th these problems are affecting every community, uh, even the ones that people wouldn't, wouldn't really necessarily think about. So thanks for bringing that up. Right. And my, my last comment is, oh, go ahead, Commissioner. Right. As, as we spoke earlier, though, and having a countywide land bank, the banks will listen more to a countywide entity than necessarily Avon Lake. If you spoke <coughs> about that one foreclosure in your neighborhood, they wouldn't even take an above offer. They share sale it for less than what it was. And it impact all the residents around that housing development because now their houses are worth less because a $300,000 home sold for $167,000. So just, I mean, just those things, and that's just one example, just in Avon Lake, like Jim said, one of our premier communities. Right, so. correct. And, and just um, my final comment is, is that I agree with the other speakers that it would be great to be able to expand the board to seven. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jennifer. <coughs> Anyone else? Nobody? Well, I'll close this, and then this isn't an open, this is just a, oh. it's not a public meeting, hearing, necessarily. Mm -hmm. I do have a question from the board. Are we comfortable moving forward to file for the articles of incorporation while we work on the other? It can be a concurrent process, so we at least get in the game because it's a 60 to 90 day process for the state to approve the incorporation. I'm ready to move on that. Yeah, I wanted to go through. I just go got ahead. the information la or last night, and then I got the uh, all the details uh, this morning around 1020, I believe. So. I would ask for one week and you know, just review it. It and sounds good, but which just uh, going through the presentation again, looking over things, I do want to make a couple calls to uh, different mayors. And, That's uh, the funding. Are you discussing the funding issue or are you talking about the process? It's just the process, yeah. I just want to wait uh, one week. It, we're not going to have, there's no rush for it. It's not the details aren't even done with the state yet, so just it's going to take that 60 to 90 day process and I would hate to be behind because I believe we're going to intend to go forward. I mean, right. I don't think you're going to say no. Are you for a land bank in the county? I, I don't think so. But again, I just want to review the material. And again, I'm just asking for one week. I spoke with Mr. Cortez yesterday and it's not an urgent matter that has to be decided today. But Mr. Cortez, can we wait a week? Forever. I, well, I mean, as <laughs> I, I understand, but I don't want to miss out on funding. I, whatever the pleasure to board, I don't. I we've been working on this for a while. I again, I don't. I don't know that a week would make a big difference, but I don't have a crystal ball. It, it 
the the uh, uh, we we do need to do the articles of uh, requesting the treasurer do the articles of incorporation, etc. Uh, but but I can't truthfully tell you that that a couple more days is going to make a significant impact. That's fine. We'll go for next week then. Can you put it on first, maybe in case we have? Do we have anything scheduled for next week? First, I mean, is there a? I know we haven't. Then we have a May second road vacation or we something. We do, and I think we're going to work that out actually. Oh, really? Different. They well, are working out. Okay, good. No, not really. But <laughs> no, not really. Okay. <laughs> All right, but if we could put it first on our agenda prior to starting the meeting for those sure. who might want to show up and make comments At about it. At 9:30. Yes. Um, to go back to the, are we done with that? Yep. Go back to the agenda. Um, commissioner's meeting will return to 930 starting next week. Uh, village of Grafton petition to conform boundaries is sent it to the engineers that will review the once I get it back resolution to adopt. Also, Twin Lakes <coughs> Homes Limited, O'Leary and City of O'Leary petition to clean and or remove objections from Straw Hag Ditch and its lateral ditches. There, as of right now, there's 188 parcels. Send it to the engineer to review. Board correspondence. Move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Public comment. Anybody else wishing to bring up an issue with us today? Seeing none, I move that we go into executive session as outlined by the county administrator. Did you have any? You didn't have anything, Jerry? Yeah, Jerry, Jerry did. did. Oh, Jerry and, and the assistant county prosecutor. Second. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kayla. Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.